Hi, this is Lindley Oz, and I have with me today Mark Cook. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I am blessed, Lynn. How are you? I am blessed to have you, and I'm going to tell my listeners a little bit about you first before you share your amazing testimony and what God has you doing right now. So for those of you watching, Mark is an author, and we're going to talk about uh, his book, The First Hour for Men. He is a speaker and Hollywood film producer. He produced several A-list films, including uh, a number one box office hit, which I'm sure most of you remember, Lost in Space. He is dedicating his life to God and is now committed to spreading the message of Jesus Christ through faith-based global media, including books, which we just mentioned, and feature films. He is the chairman of Prelude Pictures, which produces and markets morally responsible message-based family films. Now, I also want to mention his new mission. He is focused on bringing the men of this nation back to a daily relationship with God. And I'm telling you, that is awesome because so many men in this nation right now are just so out of it. In, in their relationship with God, and it's affecting the family because men are not taking their proper position as God meant for them to take. Um, he, he has a goal, and his goal is to distribute one million copies of his book, The First Hour for Men, in 2017 through 2018. Men's lives all across the nation are being radically changed through this book, The First Hour, for men. It's a 30-day program. Marriages are being healed. Relationships with children are being restored. Financial burdens are being lifted. Basically, it's helping to put the family back together that is so rapidly falling apart. Miracles are happening in men's lives across this nation. So um, you don't want to miss this life-changing event that's coming up that we're also going to mention um, that, that he has here in Ohio very soon. So, Mark, now that I've given your background, I would love it if you would share first with the viewers your personal testimony and how you came to the Lord. Okay. Well, thank you, and thanks for having me again. Um, pleasure being on here. And um, I'll, I'll tell you, on the website also you can see the testimony that the 700 Club did because they narrow it down to about three and a half minutes. And when I get going, it could take 20 minutes. So I'm going to try to give you the shortened version and, and then get, you know, just to some of the, the horrors of it. But uh, basically started out um, and, you know, my pre-Christian days, uh, I got basically got saved in 1997. I got saved four months before Lost in Space came out. And actually, the video is called Lost in Space, Saved by Grace. And that's what it's all about. I mean, I was living in the fast lane. Um, I was doing things I shouldn't be doing. I was living the, the Hollywood A-League life and, and partying all the time. Um, my family was a mess. My marriage was a mess. Um, and I was a mess. And uh, I got, I got uh, saved in December of 97, four months prior to Lost in Space coming out. And it was amazing. Um, again, I was at the top of this mountain. Uh, all my worldly dreams came true. Financially, I was successful. Um, my film Lost in Space knocked Titanic out of the number one position. So I set a box office record. Um, Black Dog with Patrick Swayze came out three weeks after Lost in Space did. So I had two in the top ten at the same time. And I thought I was all that. Um and then God was just after my heart. You know, I remember you know, when those two movies were finished, it was, uh, um, it's like I was sitting on top of this mountain looking down and seeing all the destruction that it took me to get there to make all my worldly possessions come true and earthly possessions. But I was empty. I was lost. And uh, I think that's why I did Lost in Space. And I always tell people uh, I was lost in space and saved by grace. And, and I mean that, and I just thank God every day for it. Um, you know, the times I wouldn't come home, um, again, doing things, the partying was just out of control. And in December 1997, I showed up at a church, um, and I remember uh, the music got to me. They were, I can't sing this song, because anytime I do an interview, my wife always goes, stop singing, you're terrible. 
but it was that song, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I'll never forget that, that time. My wife and I were separated at the time and she was next to me and I had so much pride. My, my pride was huge and God just stripped me down. The Holy spirit got a hold of me and that song came out. And I remember it was like I had, you know, how you get a lump in your throat when, when, when you're, when you're emotional. It's like I had a softball in my throat and I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to die right there in church, but, uh, God got a hold of me in a big way. And I still had so much pride that I just wanted the ball. I wanted to cry. I remember like itching my eyes, pretending that my eyes itched. And finally I just broke down and they did the altar call. I, I gave my life to Christ and I'll never forget it. Um, you know, accepting it as my savior. But I remember the prayer saying, Lord, mold me, use me, change me, make me the man you want me to be. And it was just an amazing feeling when um, just all this pressure was off and I felt the peace and the presence. However, when you say that, you know, the, the, the condition of my lifestyle, I had a lot of weeds in there. So after I got saved in December of 97, um, you know, the Holy Spirit plow came in there is what I call it to dig all the weeds out and everything just started falling apart. Um, just everything. It, financially, I had all kinds of lawsuits. I ended up getting a $40 million judgment put against me. Um, two of my stuntmen on Black Dog got severely burned, um, you know, beyond recognition. It was, it was a sad thing, but I just, God stripped me of all finances. I went from, and you know, my bills were like 35, 40,000 a month. And, and when, when you get stripped of all your finances, everything was falling apart. We went from a, uh, about a 6,000 square foot house to an 800 square foot apartment. And, uh, I'll never forget that. And driving the fancy cars down to a, a, uh, a Ford Explorer that had 300,000 miles on it that my, my father-in-law gave me, but that I was still happy. And that apartment was more of a home than the big 6,000 square foot house ever was. There was just this peace and, and God needed to do that. So it was, it was quite a time um, since then. You know, I've done the book the first hour, as you know. God laid that on my heart in a miraculous way. And it all boils down to obedience equals blessings and disobedience equals discipline. And, and God had to really, you know, he's our father. He loves us. And he had to really strip me of everything to, to rebuild me. Now, there's still always a battle. Um, the sanctifi sanctification period is always long. There, there's still sin. The difference is when you have such a strong relationship with Christ that you repent, you ask for forgiveness daily, and, and you keep striving to, to, to try to become more like Christ. None of us will ever be Christ, ever. But I tell people about 80% of the old Mark Cook is dead, and I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to kill the other another 10% because if I can leave or anybody can leave, you know, this world, as we go into to eternity, if we can leave this world being 90% dead of the flesh, flesh, that's sainthood. So it, it's always a battle, but boy, um, the peace and the grace that God gives us with a personal relationship is just amazing. Amen. And you know, I'm always telling people that you know, we cannot be whole until we fall apart because that's when God puts us back together instead of us trying to put ourselves back together. Absolutely. And, and I, I believe that wholeheartedly. You know, there's, there's got to be change. And, and when you accept them, you know, we all have so many weeds and a lot of buried sin that, that needs to just, you know, be cultivated. So I agree with you 100 percent. You got he has to take you down to the ashes to bring you back up. Amen. And that is how it works because I think I think that we make the mistake of trying to fix everything ourselves and our way is not God's way. The Bible even tells us that his way is different. And sometimes things happen in our lives that shake us and wake us up and God will allow that if it brings us to Amen. repentance and brings us to him. And I want to give out your website and um, I will have it on the screen in the beginning of this video as well. It's www.thefirsthour.com. Um, for those of you That's watching, correct. go check out Mark at www.thefirsthour.com, and we'll give out some more information 
toward the end of this recording. But he has shared his testimony here on the 700 Club as well. And Mark, you have something to do with Promise Keepers. Do you want to go ahead and tell the people about that? Sure. Um, as you know, I did a book. Um, I should say God did a book through me because I, I never had any intention or any premeditated idea of doing a men's devotional book. And for those people that know me, it's like, what? Mark's doing a book? I mean, So it was really God laid on my heart. Um, and it's really interesting because it's really not a book. Um, you know, it, it, it's a it's a I call it a 30 day men's boot camp. And, and God systematically in, in, in the mornings just laid on my heart what to do. It's a very, very simple 30 day course about giving your first hour to God. And there's prayers and, and uh, you got to spend time with your family. And I'll, I'll get a little more into that, you know, in, in a minute. But, um, yeah, I never planned on. On, on doing a book. So it's, 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 it's kind of neat. So, um, promise keepers got a hold of the book and, uh, coach Mac, we call him for you guys out there that know of promise keepers. So last year I did about four events with them and, you know, uh, went to Stockton, a few other cities and gave my testimony, shared the book with people. And, um, you know, what, a, what a great event, but, but this book is really something special. That is, and you said at the beginning of your show, it, it's just radically changing men's lives, it's, it's, and, and especially their relationships with their children and, and their family. So I'm excited to talk a little bit about that um, and, and what my plans are with the book, because, you know, as you know, Lynn, God always has his perfect timing. Um, I did this book, I think, 10 years ago, um, 10, 11 years ago, and it came out, and after it, the book was really for me, it was God setting up these guidelines for me to spend 30 days with them. And then so many people were being changed by it. I was just handing like an outline on paper to my friends that I decided to publish an actual book. But that was my timing. And God now has laid in my heart in a huge way and like this major signs that this is the time for this book. And I, I think the reason is. And is you know I don't my dad always tell me two things you don't you don't talk about with a business relationships and that is um, religion and politics. But I think I'm not going to talk politics. But I think with, with with the new president and the new administration, okay, what he's trying to do in his whole campaign is make America great again. And I I, I believe and I pray for the administration. I pray for the president. I believe that they can't make America great again. I, I, I believe that they can make America prosperous again. They can make America safer again. They can create more jobs. They can do all these great things. But as far as making America great again, I, I firmly believe you have to make and start with making America's men great again. Because the danger in even in a country or a nation becoming more prosperous or, or it, 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 wealthy and safer is that I believe that as we achieve that, that the moral, the morality will even get worse because then people, if they're not suffering from the financial, they're not praying for a new job and they become comfortable. That's when they, they have a tendency of moving away from God. And that's what the first hour does. I mean, the first hour is just really strengthening and, and training you to have a daily relationship with God and giving him your first hour. So I believe, along with the administration, that we need to make America's men great again. And that's the slogan in this book, Lynn. You know, it, it, it says, if you heal the man, he will heal his family. Then the family can heal the nation. I'm in total agreement with you because— in a lot of my videos, I mention about how the family is falling apart. And if Satan can make the family fall apart, he can make the body of Christ fall apart. And where does it all begin? Well, you have your top priority. Well, what is supposed to be your top priority in the family is God at the very top. And then the head of the household, the man. And right. so Satan is directly attacking the family. And it all starts right there. And more men need to step up to the plate and take a stand, a strong stand for Jesus Christ. And the men need to repent. And the wives, don't get me wrong, they need to repent too. This whole 
the whole body of Christ right now is in a mess and needs to repent. And Amen. it all, because it all starts with the man, the spiritual head of the household, Satan is just getting in and destroying the family, and he is also getting in as a result and destroying the body of Christ. And there needs to be repentance, and that's another problem. People have become politically correct, and this has seeped into the church. And so people are just hearing this sugar-coated message that does not bring repentance because it doesn't bring conviction, and conviction is necessary for repentance. You know, God uh, said right in the Bible— it says that the truth is what sets us free, and if the truth's not being told, we're not being set free. Amen. Amen. You know, Lynn, I, I had this, uh, gosh, I was driving down the road one day, probably five years ago, and God laid on my heart. It's funny, always kind of the Holy Spirit always prompts me when I'm driving. You know, I, I don't know why, but I was really against, like motivated to combat against the ACLU and combat against all these organizations that are taking prayer out of school and the, the Ten Commandments from the courtroom. I, I was passionate about it. And I remember God laying on my heart. He said, stop the blame game. Okay. And that there's a simple plan to heal this nation. And just all these, you know, when, when God speaks to you, a, a lot of people were it's our thoughts, just like the enemy, you know, influences our thoughts. When you, when you ask for a fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit, it's like, Lord, make all of my thoughts agreeable to your will, your purpose, your plan. So when you pray that, those thoughts are the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And I, he just filled my mind with stop the blame game. Okay. And I had this vision that America is like a big house and, and all the families in it are the rooms you can't have a clean house when the rooms are dirty. If you clean the rooms up one at a time, the house, which is America, will automatically, automatically become clean. So it was like, guys, we need to clean our rooms. You know, like my mom used to always tell me, clean your room, clean your room. We need to clean our rooms. You know, it, it's not, God really didn't, the ACLU and, they really didn't take prayer out of school. and I mean, they had a, a, a part of it, okay? And, and the, the Ten Commandments from the courthouses. How many people have the Ten Commandments on their wall at their house? First of all, you don't belong in court, okay? So God laid in my heart that it's us men that have took prayer out of our homes, the Ten Commandments from our house, okay? It doesn't matter if the school's are taking prayer out of it. It's our responsibility as men to pray with our children, to protect our children, okay? And and to lead a godly example, and they will follow. They will follow. It's amazing how you see a kid, especially like my grandson's five, how he just watches his daddy, every move he makes, okay? And my grandson loves Jesus because my son prays with him, okay? Every single night, every night. So it's really, if we clean our rooms and get our house together, okay, and our, our kids aren't on drugs and, and joining gangs and all this stuff because of these organizations stripping prayer out of school, it's us men. So if us, if us men, to be, we need to re-become the spiritual leader of the house. We need to pray with our children, love our children, and, and lead them and show them and set, most importantly, set a godly example. Amen. And you know, most of my viewers happen to be men. I have a lot of ladies too, but I have more men. And so I want those of you men out there listening to pay attention to what Mark is saying here. In fact, he has an event coming up in Piqua, Ohio on November the 18th. And he's also getting invited to churches to speak. So Mark, why don't you share a little bit of that with the people because we only have a maybe I don't know 10 minutes left or so. So I would like for you to share that. Sure. Okay. Here's my my new mission and my goal and I really believe um that it's for such a time as this. You know, it, God is really um it, giving me peace about that it's time to really take this book the first hour and to sweep the nation with it. And it's interesting because the gentleman that did the foreword to this book is a guy named Rich DeVos. 
And any of you people that have been out there and have ever been in Amway, which is most everybody, okay? Uh, Rich DeVos is the founder of Amway. And he got a hold of this this idea in this book when I told him about it and, and said, yes, if you heal the man, he can heal the family, heal the nation. So he did the forward. And there's, there, there's, there's got to be a reason God had him do it because it hit me that how do we get men that quickly back to God, turned away from the sin they're living in and get them back to a daily commitment? And I call it tithing your time, okay? Giving him if it's a 10 hour day, 10%, which is an hour, the first part of your day. And so this is kind of like what I'm doing with this book is, is simple. Okay. I call it MLM. And it's multi-level ministry. And this book to explain it to you and, and you'll show a picture of the cover. I think it's called the first hour. Okay. Again, it's nothing you read guys. Okay. There's 18 prayers in there. The only part you read is the first eight, eight pages in which how God gave me this, this crazy idea of why I should do this. But in just 30 days, by spending an hour a day, you've read the entire New Testament by reading only four pages, four pages a day, back and forth. You've read the entire New Testament. You've read the entire book of Proverbs. Okay? And you've done 18 prayers. What's important about this book, these prayers are in a perfect order that it could only, it could only be God because I, I'm your average C student. I'm not really good at organizing stuff. The first three prayers, the first one is putting on the armor of God. And as we know, there is an enemy out there that does not want you to spend your first hour with God. Okay, He will distract you. So the first one is putting on the armor of God. The second prayer is asking for forgiveness and repentance, okay? Because we're all sinners. It might be a, a thought, it might be something. And the third one's a refilling of the Holy Spirit. And what God laid in my heart is that when you got your armor on fresh in the morning and you've covered all your sins with the blood of Jesus and you've asked for a fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit, now you're ready to approach the throne of Almighty God. Okay, there's plenty of scripture that God's ears are closed because of our sin that blocks them. So I believe not only the first in the first part of the morning, not only are you righteous, but you're sinless before God at that time. And again, miracles are happening. God is showing up, you know, through this course to men like like I've never seen. Okay, and there's these little checkoff lists. You have to spend an hour a day with your wife. You have to spend a half hour with your kids. So it's it's more of an outline, and the book really is the Bible. And I really think it's a great new believers course because when I first went to church and got saved, I got the Bible, and then I went home. Well, you know, heaven was applauding that I got saved, but the enemy was after me. I didn't know about the armor, and if I would have had this book. And, and as a guidance and first it would have saved me a lot of sanctification period. So this book is happening. But the important thing is once the men do the 30 day boot camp, then they get five books and they give two books to, to, to brothers that they know are already Christians. OK, but they give three books away to friends, relatives or acquaintances that they know don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. that aren't saved. And this is this book is so simple to do outreach with because most people win they don't know how to approach people and they don't know how to get them saved and in this book they just hand it to a neighbor who's having marriage problems say look at this book was a gift to me i'd like to give it to you there's on page 123 a prayer for your wife i don't know what your belief is but but it's really helped me and they hand it to them and in the first three p- prayers there's three times they give their life to christ so it's really a great evangel evangelistic outreach tool as well. Praise the Lord. So for my female listeners out there, I would like to encourage you to encourage your husbands to get this book. Or if you have, if you're not married and and you have a special man in your life, um, I encourage you to get this book or just give it to somebody special. Maybe it's your dad or something or your grandpa, whoever. Um, Get this book and share it because it will help lead people to the Lord and help strengthen the family for sure. And you also have an event I mentioned coming up in Piqua, Ohio on November the 18th. 
Um, did you want to no. share that and also share with people if they're interested in uh, you know having a book event or scheduling a book event with you, how they can get a hold of you and how they can do that? Sure. Great, great. Yeah. And pick, I keep messing the name up, pick law or whatever it is. Um, it's a special event. If anybody's in that area within a two hour drive, they should come. Uh, um, these, these, I'm doing events at churches. I do men's breakfast. I do speak to the entire church. I give a testimony. Um, and, and I usually give a lot of books out at these events. I just give them away but they're powerful. The Holy Spirit showing up at these events. So the best thing you can do, if you go to the first hour.com, okay, you will see, it says for speaking engagements or events, and you'll click on that and you'll shoot an email. Okay. Uh, John Stubbins who handles all these events for me that God's using in a miraculous way. He's just a, a complete servant for Christ. He will get back in touch with you. The email goes directly to him. There's a phone number. You can call him directly. Um, so just go to the first hour. Um, we're developing a whole new site right now that should be up in a couple of days, but the, uh, the older site st- is still there and the contact information is on there. But I love um, going to places and I, I, I always go on my dime. So anybody that's listening out there that has a church that wants me to come, I'll fly in and fly in anywhere. I pay my own airfare. I pay my own hotel. And I refuse to take, uh, you know, honorariums or or to be pay, paid for speaking. I, I just refuse. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, my mission is to save men and touch men from destruction because uh, my life was complete chaos, even though I had, again, all these earthly blessings, money, somewhat fame, everything. I was lost. That's why, that's probably why God had me do lost in space. So I, I I title these breakfasts and events lost in space, saved by grace. But again, go to the website, um, and check that out. I'm also right now for the next 30 days, anybody that goes to the website, um, that gets a book, I'm going to send them. It doesn't even say it on there, but right now, anybody that orders a book, we, we're putting a second one in there for free. Um, we're going to send them to, so they can share with somebody. Um, the new site will have that on there, but right now, if anybody orders a book, we are going to send them to. So, um, uh, I'm really excited about this year and what it can do. And, and, uh, men out there, I'm telling you, it, it, this is a life changer. It, it's really God speaking to you. Um, and just calling on you that he wants to spend time with. He's your father. You're his son. Um, and he loves you. He wants to spend time with you. And ladies, there's some good news. A lot of women have been buying this book and they do it. Okay. The only thing I caution you on, it says, especially you single women, it says praying for a, a mate or praying, you know, um, uh, for my wife. Just make sure, you, make sure you switch that, those two prayers to husband and the other one. But, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of women have done this. There, there, there will be the first hour for women coming out in the future. Um, don't know exactly when. And uh, But I'm just really excited about it. Um, I, I just think it's a life changer for you men. Well, I'm excited, too. And I think that... Uh, I think that we're really living in some crazy times and we're seeing all sorts of signs happening that would let us know that it's time to repent and time to get right because Jesus is coming so soon. And I'm trying to do everything I can to get the word out and to encourage. So I encourage people to get this book. And as he said, he's going to send a free copy if you order one because he truly wants to help people. Now, I will have up on the screen the information he mentioned Um, about contacting John Stubbins, and you can go to the website too. In fact, I encourage you to go to the website as well, but I'll also have that up on the screen. Uh, This event in Piqua that's taking place November the 18th, it's from 9 to 11 Eastern Time. That information will be available to you on his website as well as below the video and on the screen. So be sure and go to his website, thefirsthour.com, and check him out. And do you have any final words, Mark, that you would like to share with the people before we end the show here? Um, I, I do. I do. For any of you men and, and for you women that are listening that are married and you, and, and you know your husband's not right, um, you know, get the book for them. 
Okay. But for you, for any of you men out there that are just not filled with perfect peace on a daily basis, and and I'm starting a new new film again, Lynn, coming out, and I got a lot of stuff coming at me from every direction. But I listen to so much Christian music, and I love that one song. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I promise you that if you. Be- make a habit of giving God the first part of your day. Now this 30 day course, it's a boot camp. You're going to give them an hour, but when you're done with that course, some of you will continue an hour, but some of you will be in the habit of at least giving them the first part of your day. It was 15, 20 minutes and praying with him and meeting with him daily. I promise you, I promise you, he will show up and he will change your life. Like you've never, ever, ever expected Okay, it, it, I am radically changed. Sure, there's still the problems. Sure, there's still the struggles. But I, I have got so much joy and so much peace under any circumstances because I meet with them each morning. I meet with my father each morning. I encourage you to do this. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord for what you're doing by reaching families and you know mainly through the men because that is very important. Well, thank you so much. Mark, for coming on my show today. I so appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to do this. And thank you to all of you listening and watching. Please share this video with others so they too can be blessed. Visit Mark at thefirsthour.com and check him out and get the copy of his book. Um, The link will be posted below the video, as I said. Um, This is definitely a book that everybody should have in their home, and he will send you a free copy of the book as well. Again, the book is The First Hour for Men, and it's exciting that you're coming out for One for Women, too, and I'm sure that... I'm sure that you'll have an update on your website when that does come out so people can kind of check back and see at a later date, right? You bet. And Mark, before we go here, why don't we finish off with a quick prayer and I'll start and then uh, mine will be short and then I'll let you go ahead and finish it. Does that sound good? Amen. Love to. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time together and we just thank you that People out there are being blessed by this recording, and many people are going to to hear this, and just thank you for that, and thank you that you are blessing people's homes and families, and that men out there are taking a stand for Jesus Christ, and that people are repenting, and we just thank you and praise you, Lord, that there is a spirit of repentance that will sweep this nation And the body of Christ is going to take a strong stand for you, Lord. We just thank you and praise you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just come before you, Lord God, and uh, thank you for Lynn, what she's doing in her heart. Lord God, I just ask you just in the name of Jesus that you would touch the men and women that are listening to this recording. And Father, that you would just, just fill them with, with passion to want to get to know you better, to spend time with you, and to spend time and commit to spend time each and every morning. And Father, whether they get a book or not, if they would make a commitment to you, Father, that you would just put in their spirit that you're waiting for them. You're waiting for them each and every morning to start their day out, to help them with their problems, to help them with their challenges, that you are there for them. You're ever so present. So Lord God, I just ask you to fill each and every one of Lynn's viewers right now with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Mark, thank you again for coming on my show, and it was great to have you. And thank you to all those who are listening out there for praying for Mark and what he's doing and also praying for my ministry. And God bless all of you. Please share this video with others so they can be blessed by it. And last but not least, don't forget to visit Mark at thefirsthour.com. Thank you so much, Mark, and God bless you. Thank you so much. Bless you, Lynn.